Hey guys, welcome to another screencast. In this screencast, we're going to progress right into our final project. Our final project is going to be to develop a game similar to the Asteroids game. If you guys don't know the Asteroids game, it's a classic game that came out, I think, in, the, in 1979, um, where you can fly around and you have this little ship uh, that you can just shoot and you can hit different objects. So there's going to be a couple of uh, interesting concepts that emerge from developing this what seems like a simple game. Um, it's basically basically going to touch on all of the core concepts that we've studied in this class so far. Um, all of those core you know software development concepts that we've been going over. So I'm here in Stackstar. I'm going to go ahead and click edit and get into our environment. Now the goal of this screencast is going to be to get a ship that renders on the screen that we can actually control using our keypad on our keyboard. All right, so the ship's not going to actually shoot yet. Um, it's, we're not gonna have any enemies yet, but we will have a ship that we can actually move around on the screen. And the representation of the ship initially will just simply be a triangle, okay? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna get into our environment here. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna go ahead in our sketches folder. We're gonna right click that and go new file. I'm gonna go ahead and call this game our um, ship shooter.js. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it ship shooter.js. And now that's in there, I'm gonna go ahead and double click that and open it. Now we should have an empty file here. Now I'm gonna also open our index.html and I'm gonna link up, we had our soundboard in here previously. I'm gonna go ahead and link up our ship shooter.js. Now when we go back and actually run our application, we click run, we should just see an empty white screen, nothing going on. So let's dive back in and let's just lay the groundwork here for our, uh, our P5.js sketch. We need those two core functions, right? We need our function setup, and we need our function draw. Now within our setup, we're going to have our create canvas, and we'll go ahead and make that the window width and the window height. And we'll go ahead and make our background color black. Okay. Now, with that in place, we should be able to go back to our application, refresh, and we should now have a nice black background. Awesome, and it should take up the entire screen. Great. Now, we need to start thinking about uh, what a ship actually is, right? And this is where we're going to start to um, look at object-oriented programming. And object-oriented programming makes it really convenient for us because we can think about the world that we want to create and then describe that world through objects, right? And we, we, we are going to be able to create these objects by defining uh, what we call what we call blueprints in class, right? We've talked about this idea of, of a class being a blueprint and then we can take that blueprint and actually build or instantiate objects with it. And those objects we can then manipulate with code and use it to draw things to the screen and listen for user input or react to user input and things like that. So the first object that we wanna talk about when we're talking about this game is the ship, the ship itself. So let's go ahead and describe a ship. So outside of the actual draw function, we don't have anything in the draw function just yet. Outside of the draw function, we're gonna go ahead and say class ship. We're gonna open our curly and close our curly. Now we're starting to describe what a ship actually is. And this is where we're going to enter um, information about our ship, and we're gonna also build the functionality of our ship within this class. And we call the class ship. Notice how I capitalize that S. That's typically what we do when we're describing an actual class. Now, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to actually want to create a constructor. This constructor is going to initialize any of the any of the variables or what we call properties that are part of the class itself. So to do that in JavaScript here, I'm going to say constructor and open and close curly within this. So you notice how we have the curly brackets in this. So we really have a function inside of the ship 
that is going to be called anytime we construct a ship. So now we want to be able to draw the ship at a specific coordinate in space, right? So if we look at this big black vast ocean that we have here, you can visualize this in your head as just a big coordinate system. We have X and Y coordinates all over the place that we can place things down on. So we want to be able to place this ship down and at some X, Y coordinate. So why don't we go ahead and pass that into the constructor as X and Y. And then within the actual object itself, we'll have internal properties that keep track of its position in space. So we'll say this dot X equals X and this dot Y equals Y. Now we're using that the this um, declaration here to declare internal properties of the ship itself. So this is actually variables that live within the instance of the ship. So every ship we build, if we had say multiple ships, we would have specific X and Y coordinates that we can track for that ship. So now we know we, we have a, the ability to build ships with specific X and Y coordinates just by using this simple piece of code. We don't actually have the ability to draw the ship yet. So in order to do that, we're going to have to create another function, what we call methods inside of a class, and we'll call this method draw. Now I'm making this up. We can call this, this method anything we want, but because it's going to be called within the actual draw function itself, it makes sense to just keep it named simply that we can kind of correlate in our minds what this function actually does, which in this case, it's going to draw things to the screen. So in the draw function, we're going to want to actually draw something to an X and Y coordinate. Now let's pop over to the P5JS reference. And let's go ahead and look at the, um, the triangle function. So now the triangle function is going to enable us to make a triangle. And there's a couple of parameters to the function. There's basically three points in a triangle, right? So it's going to take three sets of X and Y coordinates, X1, X2, X3, and Y1, Y2, and, and Y3. So we are going to take the input from the X and Y coordinate we want to draw, and why don't we use that for the first X and Y coordinate? So that'll be kind of like the, the tip point of the triangle, right? This point right here. And then we can draw the other two coordinates off of that, or basically offsets from that triangle. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say we're going to make the triangle, and we'll make it this dot x is going to be the first x, and this dot y is going to be the second one. Now, the for the for the actual second point in the triangle, right, this point right here, we'll move over the x by subtracting a small amount and we'll increase the y by adding a certain amount, right? So we'll go ahead and say that the next x is going to be this dot x, say minus, I'm just making up a number 20 and we'll see how that looks. And then this dot y plus 20, right? And then we'll do the same exact thing. I'll copy these two lines for the last point. And instead of minus 20 here, I'm going to say plus 20, but we still want to move down on the Y. So I'm going to go ahead and say um, plus 20 on the Y. Now I'm going to go ahead and just put some spaces here just to make it a little clearer to read. And one last thing we want to do is we want to actually um, make a fill here. So we're going to fill this and we'll fill this white just so that it's going to be a white triangle. All right, and we don't want that little at the end there. So now we have the ability to draw a triangle to a specific X and Y coordinate within this class, but we don't actually uh, we don't actually construct this class yet, right? We don't actually have a ship. We're just defining the blueprint for what a ship should look like. In this case, a ship only looks like a triangle that we draw at some specific position in space. So how do we actually make it so that this ship can be constructed? Well, remember, we have that nice little operator called the new operator, the new operator. And the new operator allows us to what we call instantiate the class. 
So we can instantiate a ship, and then once it's instantiated or built, we can then call the methods within it to do what we want it to do. In this case, we want it to draw to the screen. So let's go ahead and outside of any function, we're going to define a global variable. I'm going to say let ship, right? And we're not going to actually define anything on the ship yet. We're just going to say that we, we're going to be defining a ship eventually. And then within the setup, we're going to actually build the ship. So we're going to say ship equals new ship. And we need to give the ship an X and Y coordinate to start at. So why don't we say, um, maybe the ship should start at the center of the screen, right? Now to do that, we could say, give it an X and Y coordinate of the window width divided by two, right? That'll, that'll center it on the width. And then the window height divided by two, which would then center it directly in the center of the screen. All right. These are all little kind of math tricks that enable us to kind of get things where we want them precisely, right? So this should this should pass in an x and y coordinate that is at the center of the screen. Now, did the ship actually draw to the screen yet? It didn't, right? We didn't actually call the draw method on the ship. Now, we can call it right here, right? We could say ship.draw. And that should draw it. We don't actually need the draw function just yet because we're not actually going and looping over the um, the actual variables yet. We don't need to do that, right? Because we, we're not changing anything. So we could put the ship.draw within the draw function, but nothing would change, but it would still be calling this over and over again, you know, 30 times per second. We don't really need to do that right now. We just want to see if we can get this bad boy drawn to the screen. So Let's go ahead and try to run this and see what happens. Boom, there we go. We have a triangle at the center of the screen, directly in the center. Now the triangle looks a little flat and wide. Why don't we go ahead and thin it out a little bit and maybe make it a little bit taller, okay? So I'm gonna go back and this is where we could just tweak it. This is where we had these parameters here. We went out 20, why don't we go out 10 on the X, right? And then I'm gonna go down a little bit further on the Y. We're gonna go down by 30 here. And now let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. There we go, that's a little bit better. So now we have a little nice tall triangle here that looks a little bit more like a ship. So I'll keep this on the screen for a second here. You can pause the video here to take a look at um, what's going on. But a couple of things that are to note here. We, we defined a global variable ship that we then constructed using the blueprint of a ship that we defined as a class. We created a constructor that allowed us to pass in a coordinate pair, an X and Y coordinate, then we stored into specific variables that are within the ship itself, right? These properties. We defined a method, which is a function inside of a class that allowed us to use these properties to draw a triangle to the screen at those specific coordinates. Now, a couple of kind of syntax things that we did up here within the setup function, right? We have the ship, which we named the ship with a capital S, but then the actual instance of a ship, we also called ship, but we made it with a lowercase s. Now, that is kind of a little naming convention that makes it really easy once you get used to the naming convention to see that, okay, ship is an actual instance and then ship with a capital S is the actual class that we can instantiate. So after line eight executes in our program, we now have an instance of a ship, which we then can use. That instance has internal, we call internal state. And that state is an X and Y coordinate and the ability to draw itself to the screen using um, the functions we've defined in the draw method. Now, this ship is not going to actually move anywhere um, because we haven't defined any type of movement yet. Now, let's go ahead and see what happens if we um, maybe change some of the internal variables every time we call draw, right? Maybe um, let's go ahead and move this ship.draw
and we'll put it into the draw function. Now the draw function is gonna get called every 30 seconds. So when we call the draw function, uh, 30 times a second, I should say. So when we call the draw function, and we re just refresh this here, it really shouldn't change at all. We're gonna see the same exact output. But because it's being called a bunch of times, we can actually change some of the variables in the draw function to do something. So we could say, um, let's make this dot x plus plus. Now every time the draw function, this, this method is called, it's going to increase the value of x that is internal to this ship. So we should see what we do expect is the actual ship is going to move across the screen. Now, because we're not clearing out the screen every time we call the draw function, we're not doing a background call here, we're going to see multiple show what seems like multiple ships just draw across the screen. Let's see what happens. Hmm. And we kind of got this like trail going on with the ship and it's moving across the screen. We're not controlling it, but we're just increasing that X value. We've done this a couple of times in a couple of other projects that we've worked on throughout the semester. Let's go ahead and let's actually combine this with some input. So when we actually input something, um, when we actually detect input, we're gonna modify some of these values. And this is how we're gonna get the actual controller to work. So I'm gonna take out this this.x++ We'll keep the ship.draw within the, the draw function here. And what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and let's go back to our soundboard and let's take let's go ahead and reference this function. This is the key press function that we looked at previously. The key press function allows us to detect when a certain keyboard input is pressed. And we can look at the key code or we can look at some internal variables that are given to us by p5.js to detect certain key presses. So let's go ahead and bring in our key press function right below the draw function here. I'm going to say function key pressed. Now this will get called automatically from the p5.js framework when we actually hit a key. Um, now there are some there are some internal variables that we have access to and I'm just going to go ahead to our reference here to reference them. And if we look in the reference here, there are these key codes that are capitalized. We call these constants. And these constants allow us to detect when certain keys are pressed. And you can see here, key code equals left arrow, right arrow, right? So we can actually detect the left and right arrow and the up and down arrow on the keyboard by just using these constants. So let's go back here and we could say if key code now watch the case on the key code because the key code is an internal variable that is part of p5.js and that capital C does matter we'll say equals equals and we'll actually use the um, the correct equals 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 which tests truly for the actual um, equality here um, and we'll say left arrow so if the user if the user hits the left arrow, this block of code will execute. And when this does execute, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take the ship and dot x plus plus. We're going to go ahead and actually that's the left arrow, right? Oh, it's left. So we want to actually make it go to the left, minus, minus. So I am actually directly accessing the internal properties. Typically we wouldn't wanna do this and we'll probably write an update method later on to kind of um, what we call encapsulate some of the internal properties of this class. But for now, we can just directly access this and we should be able to see this in action if we go ahead and refresh the page. So now if I go ahead and refresh and I hit the left arrow, You'll see it's moving very slowly. Ooh. And that is my phone. Excellent. So it's moving very slowly.
and it's not really too smooth. It doesn't really feel too great. I have to like tap it, right? Um, so the key pressed, is there a key is pressed? So the key is pressed may actually be a better uh, use case for this. So try this out, see how it feels. And what we could do is we could say, you know, minus equals um, say 10, right? And that'll make it move a little bit more, but you'll notice something here. As we do this, we have to actually tap that left key. If we hit up key, it doesn't work. If we hit the down key, it doesn't work. If we hit the right key, it doesn't work. We actually have to tap that key. If I hold it down, it doesn't go. That doesn't really feel good in terms of the game, right? So what we need to do is we need to detect if the key is actually completely held down, right? And there's a internal variable, another internal variable in P5JS that allows us to do this. And this is the key is pressed. And this is, this is what we call, we, we brought this up a couple times in class, um, is a Boolean variable. So it returns a, a true or false if a key is pressed. And we can actually put this directly in the draw function and we can test for it in the draw function and then test for the key code within the draw function. So before we actually write the additional conditional statements to be able to test for other keys, let's go ahead and convert this to use the key pressed is key pressed function or variable I should say it's not a function so let's go ahead and say in the draw function if key is pressed where am I here if key is pressed now this code will execute what is going on here with my keyboard here? We'll execute when a key is held down, which is what we want, right? Now what we can do within this conditional statement, this is where we have a little uh, nested conditional, we can take this little block of code, cut it, and put it right in here, and say, hey, if the key code is the left arrow, then move the ship to the left. Now let's go ahead and see what happens here. Now if I held down the, the arrow, whoa, it goes, boom. And it's going pretty quick. So let's go ahead and slow that down a little bit. Let's go ahead and maybe make it a uh, three. And also in the draw function, so it doesn't overwrite, like keep drawing a triangle on top of itself. Let's go ahead and just put a background right in the beginning of the draw function. And we'll say background black. So we'll kind of just black out the background. Now let's go ahead and refresh it. And now, boom, it's moving around. Pretty cool. All right. So now what we can do is, we can, we can add the additional conditional statements to be able to uh, move it uh, up, down, left, or right. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna stop the video here because I think I've been going for a minute now. I should probably have a timer on the screen. Um, and the assignment for today, uh, for the week really, is going to be to build this so that you can use the other arrows on your keyboard. So build this out so that the left arrow works the up hour works, the down hour works, and the right hour works. You'll also notice that when you try this out, once I hit the left key, it just keeps going. It doesn't stop until I hit another key. Which is probably fine. You know what, that's probably fine for, for now. But maybe think about how we can detect whether or not um, we lift it off the key or not and stop the ship. But for, for the assignment, we're gonna go ahead and just build these conditionals out so that we have the left, um, right, up, and down working. We do not need this key press function here anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. And there you have it. So we have a ship that we can now move using user input. And it draws a basic triangle. So we're gonna to continue to build upon this. Um, in, the, in class, we'll, we'll review this in class on Thursday and we're going to then work on shooting 
actual bullets out of the ship so that we can start to, um, you know, attack enemies when we start to draw enemies. All right. Excellent. Any questions, you know where to find me. Thanks, guys.